And I'm on with Jarek Robbins. What's up, buddy? How you doing, sir? Dude, it's so good to see you. It's been uh, it's been way too long. It has been a while. How how's life in Texas? It's good, man. We're uh we're living on the land. We're like homesteading. We've got sheep and we've got chickens and we got a, a, a we got dogs and cats. Those are pretty normal. But um, what else? What other animals do we have? Um, yeah, we have. But it's like we're my my wife is slanging eggs. Yeah, she, my wife and kids are slinging eggs. The kids will come home and be like, mom, I need a dozen for uh, Betty uh, bringing to school today. <laughs> She's like, my, right. my favorite thing is the Instagram stories people are creating about egg dealers. You see yeah. the dude with like five chains and like <laughs> fur coat and all this stuff. And it's like egg dealing in 2023. Yeah. Um, my other favorite, though, was a guy who went to go check on his chickens and he looks inside and he goes, what the? what what and, and he goes what is that and he holds up a chicken and it's and the chicken has a bunch of gold chains around its neck no dude that's so funny um it it's, yeah crazy. i never realized how much i would love chickens i love their personalities they're just fun and you know they free range on our property so i'll just be out like you know sitting in the backyard at lunch or laying on a lounge chair getting some sun and chickens come up and you know just bobbing their head picking up some off the ground and like yeah they're they're uh they're cool and then when people come over they're like whoa whoa there's like seven chickens over there wait th those are sheep over there i'm like yeah this is the, this is the life man we're living it uh it's crazy we we got chickens we put up a chicken house we have the coolest chicken house on our street yeah, uh, and then my wife was so tired of chickens pooping everywhere that we we sold our chickens oh. so right before the egg shortage. So no way, like someone else made bank on that <laughs> transaction. Dude, that uh, no, the the chicken poop is a is re the, the struggle is real, man. There's chicken poop everywhere. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. a lot of power washing at the house. Hey, dude. So I want to start with the reason we even are here today. I texted you the other day just to congratulate you on success. Um, and for those that don't know, you are now the president of Success Enterprises. Um, tell us a bit about what you've learned working for this legendary 126-year-old brand. And tell me the difference between Success Enterprises and Success Magazine, because I only know the latter. I don't fully know what the enterprises entail. So I'd love to hear about that. How'd you get this role, man? Uh, it's really exciting. Totally, totally. Um, so Success Enterprises, 126-year-old company, it does, it represents the magazine. We have success.com, Success Magazine, Success Coaching, mm. um, auxiliary companies. We have Success Lending. We have Success Spaces, our, our, our locations. Um, so we have a lot going on under the umbrella of success. And, and I think something that's pretty unique is a brand that's been around for 126 years. I mean, it's represented Ogmandino, um, uh, Napoleon Hill has been a part of it. Like we have some of the most legendary, prolific, humanistic type people who've wanted humans to do better, wanted people to live better lives. Going all the way back to um, Orrin Sweet, the guy who founded it, he, he grew up in a really, really rough youth where he, he had lived between multiple homes, I think nine by the time he was 13. And, and at one of the places, he ran across this book about personal development, and it helped him psychologically, emotionally, personally to develop. And then he started this and dedicated it towards helping others live a better life, mm -hmm. helping others become happier, healthier, stronger, more fulfilled to kind of summarize uh, a, a platform there. And yeah. it's gotten to represent some of the best on earth over 126 years. It's, it's pretty cool. If you look, go back and look at the covers, we have everyone between Jeff Bezos, Mark Cuban, Sri. I don't think Serena has been on there. Um, Marie Forleo, we have tons of sharks. We have all kinds of people. And we've been considering this concept of success. How do we bring that, those tools, those strategies, those insights that help people achieve success in their life and business? Beautiful, man. And did it start as a, when he started it, was it as a magazine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think Russell Brunson ha might have the first copy. Get out of uh, here. Yeah, he he, he was doing some research on it and digging around in personal development. And I, I think he actually got his hands on the physical first copy. Wow. Dude, um, you need, you need our, to get our, that back. You need to get that in your possession. That's <laughs> okay. Our archives, we have a copy of it as well. But, but oh, you do? Okay. he was one of those people who went and found it in the world. Um, we recently had a subscriber who's collected probably thousands of issues hmm. uh, say, hey, 
I don't know if y'all want these for your archives, but I have just about every issue for the last, and I forget how many years it's been, yeah. but he sent us like six boxes of issues. And it's amazing looking back at some of the content that's been covered over decades and decades and decades of publication. That is really cool. And so, so how did you get this gig? I mean, it is a prestigious gig. And let me, and before you answer that question, um, to my understanding, Darren Hardy was the face of success for many years. That's how I knew uh, a success, right? And so, um, and also, are, so is your role, are you in the role that Darren was in before? Is that the same role or different, similar? Different role, similar, okay. but different. So okay. I got a text or, or a, a direct message on Instagram, actually, and it said, hey, it literally said, I promise this isn't a scam. Huh? <laughs> and I wrote back that I'm pretty sure that's what every scam would set, start with. <laughs> and he goes, no, I'm serious. And I said, so am I. And, and he goes, here, someone wants to talk with you about an opportunity. And I said, this is not getting any less scammy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he goes, no, seriously, if you're open to it, I can set up a meeting and you can, you know, talk to these people about an opportunity. I was like, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll entertain it. At, at so, least he didn't ask for, are you looking for an additional stream of income? Because that would have just... <laughs> That would, that would really set off the red flag. So it wasn't yeah, additional yeah. streaming income. It was just we're, we're, we have someone who has an opportunity who wants to talk to you about it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, opportunity, that's interesting. And and so I'm, I'm often keeping my eyes open and just watching stuff that's coming through. Um, and, and so it popped up and I said, okay, sure, set a meeting. So they set a meeting and I looked at my calendar and the email addresses were legit. And I went, oh, maybe this is something actually useful. And so I showed up to the meeting and this, this wonderful woman showed up, her name's Courtney, and, and she had a big smile on and she says, hi, nice to meet you. I'm so excited to talk with you. Lots of great energy. And she says, we want you to become the face of success. And I was like, thanks. Uh, what, what are you asking for? And she's like, well, we, we want you to be the president of success and, and do this and this and this and this. And I was like, thank you, but no, thank you. I'm busy. I have my own companies. They're doing great. I have a business mentor for the last eight years who told me, do not get distracted. Yeah. Build a business. My business requires three days a week, four hours a day to run it and operate it. We have a team of 15 plus people. We have clients in 160, 100, what is it, 150, 650, something. 160 yeah. client, you know, uh, countries around the world. We have active clients learning with us. I think it's 165. Yeah, double check it. Um, but but we have clients all over the world. Our business is working. I have a team. It's highly leveraged. It's in the position. And it took me 15, 14 and a half years to build. Sure. I don't want to get distracted. And I sure as shit don't want to go take a job somewhere. Like, yeah. ugh. <laughs> it's my real reaction. Yeah. And, and so... Um, I, I guess I grew up with all the psychological training, job just over broke, working paycheck to paycheck. No, thank you. I'd rather at least own my job and be self-employed, but yeah. at best become a true business owner where I own the entity and the entity works for me and then invest my cash and have my cash working for me. Like I, I've been ingrained in that psychology. So I'm not a fan of jobs yeah, to say sure. the least. And so I talked with them. I said, no, I went over to my business mentor, my wife, and they talked me into it. Hmm. They went, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is a good one. You yeah. should do it. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? You've told me for eight years, do not get distracted. He goes, I know, uh, but this is a good one. <sighs> Now, I teased him. I said, you're either going to be the chapter of the book that says, always listen to the old guy, <laughs> or you're going to be the chapter titled, the old guy isn't always right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll find out over time. That's funny. Um, and, and so with where it's at right now, I stepped into that role. We, My main focus was bringing coaching to life for them. So I, I focused on that department. I had to reorganize mm. it. We had 300% year-over-year growth in the department as far as revenue is concerned. Mm. Uh, we, we got things moving in the right direction. We've been able to bring on an uh, amazing, amazing set of coaches, and we're setting the foundation to be able to really scale it from here. That's incredible. Because, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's the bit that when, you, when you're talking about the business that you were running that was in 150, you know, clients, 150 countries, that was essentially a coaching business. Is that, am I, is that right? Um, so that business is, is training. That, okay. That's more or less personal development training. We have a program. 
and that one who's gone around the world, basically what I did was I was working in coaching and consulting. So two sides of that okay. with one-on-one -on -one clients. And over the years, I had a rule that every five clients I'd raise the price. Mm -hmm. um, one in personal development and, and business consulting, for some reason, we generally have a tough time justifying raising the price, sure. uh, mainly because it's a helping profession and helping is most important. Yeah. So if someone comes to me and they're like, I really need your help, but I just can't afford that. My heart always goes, screw the money. We yeah. need help with, and I'll get them the result. Like that's, that's who I am. Um, people always say, what would you do if money wasn't an issue? Well, if you hung out with me on a Saturday morning, I wake up, have my miracle morning routine, do all the good stuff. But then I'll usually pop into my DMs and just help people. And it's like, hey, what are you struggling with? Here, let me help you. Here, have you read this? Have you done this? Have you applied this? Here, let me send you a PDF. Let me make sure you have this. Like, I literally have fun just helping people navigate their stuff in life. It, it's, it's a passion of mine. It's a hobby. It's a joy. Sure. Um, it, it's something that brings bliss and and, and fulfillment to my daily life. It feels good to be able to have solutions for people and help them navigate the stuff they're going through. And so generally speaking, I give stuff away all the time. And my team doesn't like that always because it's a business and it pays their, their earnings and paychecks and, and they kind of need to make sure they're secure in their jobs, but it's just my nature. So I, I do that. And in, in this piece, as, as we brought that to life around the world, I noticed every five clients I raised my price. And at one point I started to get pretty expensive where people would pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month to work with me. Mm. And that was fun. It, it feels nice to the ego. It's great for lifestyle. But it, the part that kind of frustrated me was it prevented me from helping more people. Mm. So my business went better. My finances got better. My lifestyle improved but the reach of humans didn't mm. go up. And yeah. so you're helping less I people did, at a deeper level, if, right? If you will. Yeah. So I took all the same tools that I had been teaching people at, you know, 10 grand a month and said, how do I get this to the majority of humans at an accessible way? So I broke that into a program on high performance. We put it on Udemy and we made it, I think it's 13 bucks or 18 bucks. And I was like, there, now all these people can have access to the same stuff that people pay 10 grand a, work, a month to work with me one-on-one -on -one with. They can have all the tools, myself, Sean Stevenson, Wim Hof, Ben Greenfield, like all the tools, they can mm -hmm. have them and they can go better their life. And I think one of the coolest things is I love going in there and reading the, the comments of, of reviews. It, it's like 4.6 or 4.7 out of five stars has 8,000 people from 150 or 100 and something countries around the world. And it's so awesome seeing everything between like a student in India saying, thank you, sir. You helped me ace my exams mm. to, you know, a pilot in a, a female pilot who's following her dream, who lives in a country that women do not become pilots. Her family is not OK with her pursuing this career. Wow. But she took a stand and says, you know what? It's my passion. It's my dream. I'm going to do it. And she, she used the program to keep her psychology strong and keep mentally and emotionally resilient. She became a pilot and then sent me a note of her parents saying how proud they are of her. Wow. And so just knowing like it, it's reaching people at the moment they need it in their life with the tools they need to actually navigate whatever they're going through. And this is the $13 program? 13 bucks. So where do people, where, how do you find that? Um, I think you go to udemy.com, udemy.com forward slash high performance. High performance. Okay. Yep. All right. Awesome. Udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com forward slash high performance. Um, yeah. yeah, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to check that out for 13 bucks. What do you got to lose? <laughs> That's incredible. I'm telling you, it's all the best tools I use and exactly how to use them. Like it, it, it's simple, tactful, and useful. Like that's what I wanted. I wanted someone to plug in. It's three hours long and it just turns you into a rocket ship to get you where you want to go. Beautiful. I have to share something with you that I don't, I don't think I've ever shared this with you. I don't think you know this, but our mutual friend, Teresa Larico, uh, when I had cancer, so I was diagnosed with cancer and I told my, the oncologist, I don't want to do chemotherapy. I, you know, no offense doc, but I, it's poison and I don't want to poison my body. And he said, Hal, you've got two to three weeks to live if you don't start chemo tomorrow. And I, I thought that was like a scare tactic. So 
my wife is like squeezing my hand till it's going to break. She's crying, you know, and right. Like that, that I have two to three weeks to live if I don't start chemo. So I go home, I call some of the best holistic oncologists in America and two of them. Uh, and they said, Hal, your, your oncologist wasn't exaggerating whether or not he was trying to scare you. The cancer you have will kill you in the next few weeks. And there's nothing that any holistic oncologist can do to, there's no time. Your organs are failing. They're shutting down. And I went, oh God, okay. So uh, reluctantly, I, I, you know, I just started chemo the next day, and it was so difficult because, like you mentioned, you know, like a job, like you were conditioned your whole life to be an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. I've conditioned for the last twenty years to be healthy and build my immune system. So I was talking to Teresa Larico about it. She checked in, how are you doing? And I said, um, I'm really struggling. You know, I'm doing this chemo. I feel like it's poisoning me, and I know that me having that belief is not going to heal me. And she said, let me tell you a story about Jarek Robbins that I think will help you. She said, uh, and I want to hear your, I'm going to tell you real quick what she told me, and then you can actually, you know, clean it up with the, with the facts. But she I'll said, tell you the real story. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So she said, Jarek was in another country. Uh, he caught, I think it was malaria. Um, he called his dad and your dad is Tony Robbins for anyone that doesn't know, you know, who's been on the cover of success magazine. That's what I was thinking when you were listing off the people I'm like, and your dad, don't forget yeah. that. Um, but, uh, but she said that you called from the hospital. You said, I've got to do this medication. I don't know what to do. And he said, if you believe it'll work, it'll work. So that's the high level version of the story. And I applied it. And every time I would have the chemo, I would go, God, thank you for this medicine killing the cancer, but my body being strong enough to survive any of the harmful side effects. So turning it over to you, what, what is the, 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 tell that story. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you the story. So I was in uh, Uganda volunteering. I was living in a rural farming village, no electricity, no toilets, no running water. Like it, it was rural farming village. Most people were living in grass huts with mud walls. Like mm. it's a rural way. And we were there teaching them how to do organic farming we were also teaching them how to do like kitchen stoves made out of clay. So how to mix clay, how to build an oven in their in their hut, and then how to create a chimney to get the smoke out of the facility so that they aren't getting smoke inhalation every night when they try to cook dinner on an open fire. So we were yeah. teaching them life skills, things that would help in the villages at that stage. Now, wait, wait, I, I have to ask what people might be thinking, which is where did you learn how to organic farm and build play stoves or was it the organization you were with that kind of facilitated that yeah, yeah so so they brought us there and they had us work for two and a half weeks with the government to learn all these oh, wow. skill sets. and then wow. they sent us out to the villages to go then train people living in the villages on Got these it. skill sets wow um so we had a crash course for two weeks and then we were put out into the work to go educate and train and help people put it together in their lives okay. um, which falls right in line with what i love to do it, it's i learned a skill I learned how to apply it to my own life and get the result. And then I found a way to go help others do the same. And, and that's a life philosophy I have, which is learn it, live it, give it. Learn what it takes to live life you want to live. Live it, apply it, and get the tangible results in your life. Mm. Then give it. Find a way to go pay it forward to others and help them navigate the journey you've just kind of transcended yourself. So I, I love the simplicity of that. Learn it, live it, give it. I love that. Keep going. So that's where I was at. We were in the villages. I like you in a different format. I was brought up in Southern California and in Southern California, meditation and green drink solves every ailment you can come <laughs> up with um, or close to it. At least that's what I felt like growing up. So you got a headache, meditate, dig some you know, vegetable juice. You, you, you got a stomach ache, to, you know, drink some greens and meditate. I just had a list of everything it could solve. And so I got malaria. I went to the doctor because I wasn't feeling well. I had a fever. My stomach hurt. All the, all the signs. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, oh, you have malaria. You need to take the malaria medication. I was like, doc, <laughs> I'm, I'm from California. We meditate and green drink our way out of stuff. I'm good. <laughs> and so he, he, he was like, okay, pal. Uh, so I went home. He gave me the medication. I did not take the medication. I went home and just kept living life. Yeah. Uh, fast forward it got worse mm. and it kept getting worse and worse to the point that my fever was now to the, to the moon. Um, I was having chills. I was having trouble breathing at one point. Uh, I was getting dizzy. I was getting nauseous. I couldn't keep food down. Like it was getting bad. Went back to the doctor and he goes, Oh, Hey, Mr. Meditation and green drink. How'd that work <laughs> out? And I was like, 
I've been doing it. And he's like, I know you have. And he, and he just, he looked at me and he goes, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in terms of trying to cure malaria. And I was like, well, most people don't agree with me. I have my own way and, and it's working for me. I'm going to stick with it. I was stubborn. And he's like, I don't know how to explain this to you. He's like, do you use sunscreen? And I was like, of course. He's like, that's topical medicine. I'm like, oh, no, it's not. It's prevented. Like, I had all these stories yeah, yeah, yeah. about what was medicine and what wasn't medicine. It's probably similar in some way to you. Yeah. Um, and, and he sat me down and he goes, here, there, there's stories in life and then there's facts. And when facts meet stories, facts when? are what's real. Yeah. So let me just show you the facts. He drew my blood. He put it up on the screen and I had 55,000 parasites per one red blood um, cell, according to the machine he ran my blood through. Wow. And I went, wow, that's a lot. And he goes, yeah, that's too much. <laughs> and he said, let me do math for you. Like we can agree on math. Like you can't tell an emotional story about math. It's yeah. math. It's just yeah. numbers. And so he did the math and he put it through his equations and every eight to 10 hours, the malaria hatches, it busts through the cell and kills the red blood cell. It feeds on water. So it immediately dehydrates you, which makes mm. you feel horrible. And then it mm. goes and lays eggs in all the other red blood cells and repeats the process and doubles every eight to 10 hours. <laughs> and so he said at this rate, he did the math. He says, you have about six days left to live. Mm. And I remember being like, excuse me? And wow. he's like, yeah, you have six days left until, and it's like, until what? And he's like, until your body won't be able to sustain itself. I'm like, ugh, I don't <laughs> like that at all. Yeah. And he's like, take the medicine. And I was like, man, hold on. Okay, give me the medicine. I'm not going to take it, but just give it to me just in case. And he's like, I've never met someone so fucking stubborn in my life. <laughs> like, what is it with you? And I was like, I don't know. It's just how I was brought up. So I walked out of the room and I picked up my phone and I called my dad. And he, you know, he, I had texted his assistant, so they knew what was going on. He was just about to walk on stage at a seminar and teach for 15 hours. And, and they, I caught him right in the green room and he goes, Hey buddy, how you doing? And I was like, not good. I was just told I have six days left to live. Like, that's not a good feeling. And I feel yeah. like shit. I'm in a hospital in the middle of nowhere. I don't have any friends or family around. I don't, it, it doesn't feel good at all. And he said, so what are your options? And I was like, well, the, you know, I can either not take the medicine and keep doing what I'm doing, but it doesn't seem to be working. Mm. Or I could take the medicine and, and, you know, the doctor said, I'll go through the worst 11 days of my life. But on the other side, I might live. And I was like, that's not a lot of certainty either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and he said he, exactly what Teresa told you. He said, here's what I can tell you, buddy. If you believe the medicine will heal you, Take it and take it now. If you believe your body will heal you, it will. Whatever you believe with total certainty, do it and do it now. He's like, mm -hmm. I love you. You're going to be fine. Go for it. That was the first time in my life I hung up the phone and thought that shit didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a part of the story Teresa didn't tell you. Yeah, I no, she didn't tell me that part. And I was like, he basically just said, if you believe in it, do it. If you don't believe in it, don't do it. Yeah, and then yeah. he said, I got to go. <laughs> I was like, my God, he's full of so much helpful advice. And he's helped me in so many things. And he's always had amazing insights. And my God, fucking presidents and yeah. billionaires and all the people who are the yeah. best on earth at what they do come to him in the moment when it matters. Yeah, there were 10,000 people in the arena waiting for him 10, to come out of his green room. waiting for him to change their damn life. Yeah. And I get off the phone with my dad and went, that shit didn't help. <laughs> and, and it's the first time in my whole life he's always delivered. And in that moment, I was like, wah, wah. like that just didn't land. Yeah. And then I picked up the phone and called my mom. Totally different experience. Now, on the other side, my mom is not always was not always the one who who landed with the advice, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, but this time, she goes, "I didn't raise you for eighteen gosh darn years, different words, but gosh darn years for you to go die in in some godforsaken <laughs> country. You take that medicine, damn it." And then she said that the, the words you always feel a different, like a chill down your spine when a mom lays it in. And I'm on my way. 
And then oh. she hung up the phone. I'm like, oh shit, my mom's never been out of the country. Like, wow. <laughs> and and I'll give you a fast forward story. My poor yeah. mom got all the inoculations in one day, which would make everyone sick. Then she got on like five different flights from Los Angeles all the way. Um, when she, she was run, she that she was never in great shape, but she was running mm-hmm. through the airport in Cairo. Uh, when she got off the plane in in um, or she ran through the airport in London. In Cairo, she got off the plane and they put stairs instead of a ramp. And on the bottom stair, her her bag swung forward and pulled her and she fell on her hands and knees. All the people behind her were clapping because they thought she was kissing the ground to be grateful they landed. Oh, my God. Rude here. Um, Some old guy grabbed her boob. Well, they were when he was what? pretending to be asleep and felt her up on the plane. I'm like, I'll, I'm half dead, bro. I'll kill him. Like, uh, who, who, my mom. Um, and then she finally arrived. And the hotel she stood at, she's like, take me to my son. And he's like, no, it's dangerous. You can't drive the roads at night. It's dangerous. We'll have to stay at the hotel. We'll go in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so they pulled him to the hotel. The dude has a machine gun when she arrives at the gate. So she's never seen that before. She's scared. There's a giant frog in her bathroom and mosquitoes all over her mosquito net all night. Uh, And then she finally arrives. And my favorite thing that happened um, I was starting to feel better after about eight, nine days in the hospital at this point. She finally so at that arrived. point you're taking that you took her advice. I took my mom's advice. And I'd I imagine, let me ask you, did you combine it with your dad's advice? Totally. Totally. Okay. I, I mean, I, I wrote about this in my book, live it, okay. where I started using mental visualizations, yeah. affirmations, incantations, yeah. thinking of creating a compelling future. I was doing everything I knew mentally, emotionally, and psychologically to prepare myself to go beyond that sixth day Mm. um you have to you have to in that moment if you give up if you decide this is it if you decide this is the end if you can't have a compelling future and you're not clearly emotionally mentally physically and spiritually connected to it life will take you out totally it's it's easy to give up and die it's hard to keep living Mm -hmm. and so that ability to make a decision that says you know what this isn't it i'm not done it ain't over and i'm gonna find a way to forge through and yeah. then there's tools. There's tools you can use. Visualization, affirmations, incantation. You're driving it into your nervous system, your belief system. You're creating empowering beliefs. You're creating a compelling future. In times like nowadays, I mean, things are getting rough out in the marketplace. These are tools that are absolutely not optional in times like now. They're, mm-hmm. they're mandatory in times like this. Not everyone's going to survive what's going on in the marketplace. Not every business is going to make it. Not sure. every person is going to keep their job like things are going to get more rough before they get better supposedly supposed to land midsummer this year and i always say when things are easy or good people tend not to do the practice necessary to prepare themselves for when things are hard and when things get hard you quickly find out who put in the practice and who didn't sure and so we're hitting a time in life where things are about to get hard and we're about to see a lot of people melt down because they haven't been putting in the practice And so in that moment in my life, I I was practicing every morning, every afternoon, every day, constantly, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, preparing myself to make it through. Took the medicine, had the worst 11 days of my life. It Mm. sucked. I had vertigo. I mean, I was crawling to the bathroom. I lost, I went from like 215 pounds down to 185 over that period of time. Like it jacked up. 30 pounds in 11 days. Well, yeah, it roughed me up. And the, the, fun part or the interesting part is i was starting to feel a little better i was on the back of a bike taxi where you sit sideways on the back of a bike and a dude pedals you through town yeah and a van pulled up next to me and my mom looked out the window and just had that look on her face like i'm gonna kill you (laughs) and the van i was like mom the van stopped i stopped the door opened, and my mom stepped out of this this taxi van wearing neon yellow from head to toe what you're like a traffic cone I Uh, looked at her, I'm like, what are you wearing? And she goes, your damn grandma told me that people wear bright colors in Africa. (laughs) I was dying. Because my my mom stepped out of the van in the middle of a village wearing neon yellow shirt, (laughs) shorts, shoes. Like, she was glowing. You mean, she was a funny. and you could see from miles down the road. That's and great. every person's head in the village looked over like, what is that? Yeah, uh, It was amazing. So it's just those experiences, though. And, and the neat part was combining both of their advice. Yeah. My mom being willing to say, hey, 
I know you don't want to. I know you're being stubborn, but gosh mm. darn it, take the medicine because you need to right now. You're at a yep. time in life where the medicine is the thing that'll help. Yep. And dad's saying, you got to make sure mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you dial yourself in so you can see way beyond just the six day possible mm. ending point for you. And you got to build that into your nervous system so that your body will do the work through the challenges. Because there's moments when you're puking your guts out and everything's coming out the other end and you can't see straight and you have vertigo where you're like, man, I don't know if it's worth fighting anymore. Yeah, It might be worth saying, screw it, I'm done. Yeah, But if you can drive that compelling future, if you can drive those beliefs, if you can drive those mental, emotional, physical, spiritual attributes of yourself to the point that you can see it, feel it, taste it, hear it, and experience something worth living for beyond yourself, yeah, you'll do it. You'll find a way through. Humans are incredibly resilient. There's so many things that are coming up for me. Um, one is it reminds me I interviewed Dr. Bernie Siegel a few years ago who wrote Love, Medicine, and Miracles, famed cancer surgeon. And he said that every patient, you know, he had treated over 3,000 patients. And he said that uh, the one commonality in every patient that survived their cancer, including those that survived cancers that they shouldn't have statistically survived, that he didn't even yeah. think they were going to survive. He said they they were stubborn. They, essentially, right? Like they, they had, they just, they had their mindset that I'm going to survive. There's no other option. And then they did. And then he said he saw people with lesser cancers that they should have beaten, but they had given up hope. And, you know, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And my layman's explanation is always, you know, we have trillions of cells that, that are listening. They're always doing whatever we tell them to do. Yeah. And if we're living in stress and we're living in fear and we're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. They're like, oh, we're dying. Okay, I guess that's what we're doing. But if you implement, you know, the practices you're talking about, you know, which most of those are all part of the miracle morning, right? Is, you know, your visualization, meditation, affirmations, you know, journaling, reading, focusing on what you want in your life. Um, then your cells go, Oh, that's what we're doing. We're going to make it. We're going to live. We're going to create an amazing future. And you're harnessing your own God given power to manifest what you want in your life in not a, you know, I, I would say yes, a spiritual way, but in a practical way, just as much. Totally, totally. In the book, A Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl, who was a, a psychologist who was working with people going through concentration camps, yeah. he discovered the ones who make it versus the ones who don't are those who decided they were going to make it. That's those it. who decided they were going to make it for a reason beyond themselves were most likely to make it through. The and I ones, want... The ones oh, who didn't make it, the fastest to die in the process were the ones who thought someone was going to come save them. Someone was going to magically rescue them. Those, yes. ones didn't make it. Those ones didn't make it. The ones who said, you know what? No one's coming to save me. I have to figure this out. I'm going to make it. And I'm going to make it for and came up with a reason beyond themselves. Those are the people who made it through. I love that you shared that because for what that brings up for me, and if you're listening right now, I know we're talking about malaria and beating cancer, but I want you to understand. All the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. These tools are, you know, Jared, you alluded to this, you mentioned it, which is, is turning your financial situation around, surviving the recession, right? Yeah. Turning your marriage around, like the tools that we're talking about, visualizing what you want, creating a compelling future, creating affirmations that affirm who you need to be, how you need to show up to make the changes you want to turn the things around, right? They're universal to every aspect of life. And what you, the right. Viktor Frankl story you just talked about is, what it brought up for me is the the, the power of personal responsibility. Totally. Right? That, that totally. the degree of responsibility you take for your life determines the degree of power you have to influence your life. And, totally. you know, you mentioned Viktor Frankl, right? That those that were waiting for someone to come save them, I'm waiting for the government to save me. I, I hope they do a stimulus. I hope that blah, you know, like no one's coming to save you. No one's going to fix your life, change your life, turn your life around. And, and, and that can be scary for people, but it's really empowering to go, oh, I am the one that is responsible for turning things around. And like for, quick example, when I was in my car accident and I was told I would never walk again, you know, the, the drunk driver was, he might've been to blame for the car accident, but it was my responsibility to turn things around. Right. right. Period. And so um, yeah, if you're listening to this, again, whatever area of your life that you want to transform, that you want to improve, any goal you want to achieve, 
realize that it begins with you taking 100% responsibility for that. And then every day, aligning your thoughts, words, and actions, these the miracle morning, these practices Jared's talking about, to live in alignment with whatever it is that you want for your life. And then magically almost, right? You, oh, wow, I'm aligning my entire being with what I want. And look at these amazing people and opportunities and resources and even internal resources are showing up that are making what I want possible. Um, the other piece to that, yeah. So, so the other piece, you got to think about it. And, and there's this wonderful training called the drama triangle. So there's three places, three roles people generally get into when there's drama. Yep. They're either the victim, life is happening to me and there's nothing mm. I can do about it. Mm. They're the rescuer, the person constantly trying to block or protect or save all the victims in the world, or they're the persecutor. They're the one that's going after the, the, the person who's calling themselves a victim and not able to, to do what they want to do or live the life they want. In order to get out of that triangle, you have to elevate. The victim has to take control of their life and become the creator. Mm. Life doesn't happen to me. Life happens for me. And I have the ability to create the life I want. That is the major decision they must make. The, the person who's the perpetrator, the one going after someone, they have to become a challenger. I challenge you to step up in your life. I challenge you to live a better life. I challenge you to go make your dreams real. I challenge you to do what you know you can do. And the, the rescuer has to become a coach. Mm. Instead of trying to protect them and do it for them, you have to believe that they have the ability themselves. And you have to call that out of them. You have to challenge them. You have to coach them. You have to get them to apply their own inner strength, their own inner power, you got to give them to unleash their power from within, to awaken the inner giant, whatever you want to say. You have to coach them to bring forth the part of them that has what it takes to navigate a moment like this. If you're willing to make those three changes, everything elevates, and now you become into the present moment. You can actually get shit done. Yeah. If you don't, you'll get stuck in what's called the drama triangle, where you're, you're constantly either the victim or the perpetrator or the rescuer, and it, it, it takes you nowhere in life. It keeps you stuck. It limits your ability to live a life that you really want. It limits your ability to make progress or actually do anything worth doing. Yeah, yeah, well said. And, and that the drama triangle, if anybody's listening, if you identify with either of those three roles, right, go back and listen to that again, what Jared just said, because it's about, it's about elevating beyond the role that you're in. Um, yeah. when you're, when you're stuck in that drama triangle, um, I, I want to, I'd love to wrap today up with, uh, the core four. I know this is, this is a tool, uh, it's a passion of yours and, and what is the inspiration of this concept and, and how can people apply it to their lives? Totally. So the core four, I, I, I did a live the other day and I was kind of riffing and I asked people, I'm like, how many of you believe that you have something in your health that you could probably do a little better? Like maybe you could get better sleep or maybe you could do better in your mental health or emotional health. And everyone's like, obviously, well, duh, that makes sense. And I was like, okay, so everyone's got something in their health they want to improve on. I'm like, there's one. I was like, what about your relationships? How many of you are just like, you know, batting a thousand and have perfect relationships in, in your intimate family, community, work, client relationships and everyone's like oh no i got at least one i need to improve on i was like okay there's sure. two things we need to go for and i was like what about your career or your business how many of you have something you want to do better and everyone raised their hand i was like well that's obvious and then i was like ah the the third the fourth one is it's not how much money you make it's how much you keep and then what you do with it how mm. many of you have mike tyson yourself where you <laughs> made millions of dollars and then made it all disappear you became a magician and poof it was all gone and they all laughed. And I'm like, yeah, it's not how much you make. It's how much you keep and what you do with it, where you put it and how you have it working for you. I remember a time in my life when I used to dream and brag about making six figures. Like that was the big number. And, and at this stage, like we make more than that passively through our investments. And I was like, dang, how life has changed. Like yeah. how cool to be able to transition that. And so I, I decided to put together a program to help people in these core four areas. And so uh, it's just coming to life right now. I just developed a year's worth of content. We developed the whole thing. 
Mm. This is one of those, I'm going to put it at a price point that everyone can access type of things like the Udemy course. Yeah. Um, if people are interested, the, the place that I'm going to notify first is if you go to highperformancevalues.com. So yeah. highperformancevalues.com, take that values assessment, mm. which is a free gift from me to you to help you make sure your life is aligned with what's most important to you. It's kind of a good place to start for most people. Um, gets rid of those inner conflicts and all those frustrations of why am I doing this and lets you set up your day-to-day -day life. So it's actually in alignment uh, with what you believe and what you value, what's most important to you. So start there. I'm going to notify that list of people first, as soon as the core four is ready. Yeah. Um, but it's a community. We want to put together a community of humans who are all like-minded and working towards becoming better in their health, their relationships, their career, their business, and then their wealth. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to keep it at a price point that's very accessible so that just about anyone can hop in and, and do the work. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. I, that's a fantastic program. And in those four, right? It's like if you're thriving in all four of those areas, everything else takes care of itself because because you become the person that you need to be to be able to handle your life. Um, the uh, the last thing I want to ask you, and then we'll we'll close uh, or, or am I allowed to to talk about the next cover of Success Magazine and where people can get that? Oh, I don't think so. But I'm okay. someone incredibly good looking that might be on it. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I don't. Depends on when this is released. I, I think um, it's April twenty fourth is when we're allowed to say technically who is on the cover. Okay. Um, but but uh, I know I know a guy. Yeah. And well, there was a beautiful people. woman. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm being honest, there was all there was a, a beautiful woman. Guy, on the a beautiful woman, <laughs> uh, a strapping young lad. Like yeah. they're all there on the cover, talking about success and talking about beyond success. You know, nowadays in the '80s, success used to be a yacht and a and a Ferrari. Um, I don't think that's what success looks like nowadays. I think it's far beyond that. And so, what is beyond just tangible you know financial success look like in life and it's on it's on the cover um yeah. we'll be in newsstands all over the world so uh, i think i saw it at whole foods barnes and noble all the airport newsstands go to your local newsstand grab a copy and i'm going to do something special so i remember wanting to put things at a price point that people can access yeah if you go buy a copy of the magazine that someone really good looking and their family's on just can't say who, but you'll figure it out. Uh, if you go buy a copy of the, that issue of the magazine, um, all you're going to need to do is show us your receipt and we'll give you free access to four, four free trainings. I'm going to do one wow. on health, one on relationships, one on career and one on wealth. And I'm going to give you all of what I know for free in those as a, give you, you know, a head start to, to support you and help you navigate those categories of your life. So April 24th, that'll hit newsstands. Go grab a copy, email in a copy of your receipt. Uh, you can email it to coaching at success.com. Once we get a copy of your receipt, we'll give you a free invitation to those trainings. And then I will give you the best of what I know in those core four areas of life. Awesome. Awesome, Jarek. Well, hey, man, you're doing fantastic work in the world. You have been for decades, and uh, it's an honor to know you. It was an honor to feature you in the Miracle Morning uh, documentary. And uh, I'm just, I'm grateful to uh, to watch your journey and, and, and what you're doing at Success Enterprises and i um, grateful to be a part of your life, brother. Thank you. Same, man. Thank you. Awesome. All right, goal achievers, thank you for listening today. I love you. Go grab a copy of Success Magazine. Forward your receipt to coaching at success.com and uh, you'll get Jarek's free trainings. Um, and thank you for listening today. I appreciate you. I love you. And I will talk to y'all next week.